All right, good morning, the whole volcano. Good morning, Pastor Jason. Yeah. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Thank well, you, as Jesus. most of you know, it's the first Sunday of the month and it's July already, if you can believe it or not. Whoa. I know uh, how fast it goes by. But the first Sunday of the month, we like to acknowledge uh, our church family members' birthdays. And so I'll go down the list. If you do have a birthday and I haven't mentioned it uh, on our list, you can let us know and we'll add you to it. But um, so we'll begin with July 1st. We have Jamie Morrissey. Happy birthday, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. July 3rd, Rodney Soares. Hey. July 4th, my brother-in-law, Samson Davidson. Sam. July 8th, we have Andrea Tells. Andrea, happy birthday. July 19th, Israel Bowden. Oh, Izzy. July 20th, Dana Feldner. We miss wow. you, Dana. All the way in the mainland. Uh, the 22nd is Barbara Marcus. Barbara Marcus. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Happy birthday, Auntie. Um, uh, Okay, okay. Andy. Oh, I got you. Okay, the 23rd is my father in law, Papa Kimo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the 25th is Laurie Trombo. All right, Laurie. Happy birthday. 29th is Uncle Manny Benavides. Oh, happy birthday, Manny. Uh, also on the 29th, Marley Young. Marley! Happy birthday. The 31st, we have two. The first one is Don Tillery. Happy birthday, Don. And Kuniva Maalea. All Happy right. birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy Happy birthday, everybody. So we'll open up with some word and we'll begin our praise and worship this morning. This morning word, this morning's word comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, where the word says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there, there is freedom. freedom. Hallelujah. So let's bow our heads this morning and open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, Father. We thank you for another day of life, and we thank you for a day that we can come, we can receive salvation, we can rejoice, and we can have freedom in Christ, Father. As we go into 4th of July, Father, we thank you that we live in this great country, but more than that, we thank you for the freedom that we find in thank Christ you, Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you for all the hearts that are here seeking you. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you this morning. We love you, Lord. We give you all honor, glory, and praise, and we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Jason. I'm proud to be an American where the sun no one free. And I won't forget those who died who gave their right to me. And I gladly stand next to you and defend us still today. No doubt I love this land. I bet it's yes, I'm proud to be an American where these signs are. And I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand next to you and we found her till today. No doubt about this land. God bless the U.S. God bless the U.S. God bless the U.S. Through these praises from a grateful heart, each time I 
think of you. Praise her as a star, love you so much.
presence carried on your wings. Love you so much, Jesus. Love you so much. Sing, love you so much to the Lord. Love you so much. Love you so much. Sing one song. Last one. Love you so much. Love you so much. Jesus. Love you so much. Love you so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to. You know, from time to time, I neglect or forget because my memory is not that good anymore. And um, every time I walk in and it's a different uh, celebration. So now we're celebrating 4th of July. I walk in. So the flag has always been there. But then there's all this new decoration. Mm -hmm. Decoration there, there, there. Mm -hmm up here so let's just applaud the name of the lord and the decorating elves oh the decorating elves really good and i meant to tell you you know we kind of i don't know we kind of naturally fell into the tradition of sitting down when the hula halal um is dancing but i just want to say for the record if I'm sitting there during that, I might I might stand up and I might stay standing during the whole the whole time. So just keep that in mind. Okay? So this song we will talk about our faith. Two, three, and
Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you as a true family of the God who is above all. Thanking you, thanking you, Father, for this divine blessing. But above all, thanking you for our Lord Christ Jesus, thy Son who came and gave to us this new life of the kingdom. We can now walk earth as in heaven. And Christ Jesus, our Lord, we plead, let your way, your truth, your life, truly be for our way, our truth, and our life, and no other. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. For you are our way, our truth, and our lives. And we pray, Lord, for your guidance and your leading. In your most righteous name we pray. And all of God's children say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I will bless the Lord for
so big, God cannot solve it. There is no mountain too tall, He cannot No storm so dark, God cannot calm it. There is no sorrow so deep, God cannot Ladies and gentlemen, just take your seats for the next few moments. Good morning, good morning. God put on my heart this month to do communion in a way that only God knows. He has a plan for each and every one of us and I ask for his strength to be able to do this of all time, today. So bear with me as I take you back in time. 
As I thought about my life this past year without Rod, I realized that focusing on what I lost made time stand still. I felt sad, I felt lonely, but in Jesus, when we focus on him, I changed that perspective to thinking about the memories and the moments we've shared and the lessons that I've learned over the years. I can smile with teeth. No, just kidding. <laughs> I can smile knowing that he loved me and he prepared me for a life without him. By leaving me with people like you. I want to take this time to say thank you. Thank you all so much. I'm grateful for the song that we did. Love you so much. It speaks volume to my heart about how I feel about each of every one of you here. And I know I couldn't have made it without you. And I appreciate that. And Pastor Ray and his wisdom and the worship team, thank you for singing, He Will Carry You. We did it the last time, but it wasn't on my list for this year. But it's so good that he thought about that song and he added it. He knew I would need it more, especially today. Today I celebrate what would have been Rod's 73rd birthday. And also I celebrate Rod's memory of his birth, but also on Friday I will celebrate his death. This led me to ask pastor to do communion. It brought me into a focus of Jesus's life, realizing that he was born to die. In communion, we celebrate and remember his birth and his death. He's more special than even my husband because we focus on him first. I'm still in awe of that revelation that his sole purpose was to come and just die to save all of us because he loved all of us that much. How many of you have some form of picture of Jesus in your home, in your car, at your work, on your person? We know we have it here in our church. The Bible is like the scrapbook and it brings to life the memories and the moments of Jesus. But for some of us, we just read it. We don't see the magic that can come alive through pictures in our minds. The Bible tells us that if we look with our mind's eyes or more so the eyes of our heart, we will be able to see everything that God has for us. Everything's just laid out in the Bible. I bet if you think about some of those pictures, it brings up various emotions. Depending on the picture you choose to bring into focus, pictures of Jesus can make you happy, can make you sad. You know? So if we focus on the good ones, pictures tell the good news of such a great story. They tell us about the lessons that Jesus taught everyone back then and still teaching us today. They are so much available. You just have to open the book. Communion. Thank you, Isaiah. Communion is a time that we partake in the memories that Jesus shared with his disciples during the last summer supper. He reminds us that he will go and prepare a place for us. He says that in order for him to leave, no, in order for the Holy Spirit to come, he needs to leave. Can we pause here for a moment? Take ourselves to that moment in time where Jesus sat with the disciples. Thank you, babe. Where Jesus sat with the disciples and he was ready to talk to them. Can you picture that in your head? Can you vividly see that right now? Capture that moment, that thought, that look. 
that memory that has been written in scripture. You may find it in several places in the Bible, but I do pray that this memory, especially of communion, is found deep in your heart. I want to take you to the book of Luke. You can open up your sacraments right now. In the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 19, it reads like this. He took the bread and gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to them. And now I tell you, brothers and sisters, he's giving it to you. He's here in your mind's eyes, handing it to you because we are his disciples in this time. Then he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat. Take that moment. What I love about Luke is he's saying, do this in remembrance of me. We know we weren't there, but how awesome that the Bible can take us there anytime. Communion can be done anytime. When you feel the need to reach out to him, cry out to him, do it. He's there for you. But now I take you to 1 Corinthians eleven twenty five. 25. In the same way, after supper, did you realize they ate the bread, then they had their whole meal, and then they took the wine? Here, we skipped the meal. Why? Because we're being spiritually fed here in church. May you be filled. May you be satisfied. He took the cup, saying, this is my cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. Let us drink. Thank you, Lord. Let me leave you with this last picture. Let me take you to Exodus chapter 12. God judged Egypt with the final plague, which killed the firstborn of every Egyptian family. God told the Jews to put the lamb's blood on the doorposts of their houses. Can you take a moment and can you picture that? Can you picture that? He said, when he sees the blood, he will pass over and no plague will destroy you when I strike the land. He then prepared a special meal, which included bread and wine. He told them to celebrate it every year and give thanks to God for his protection. That's why we celebrate communion. It's a celebration. Shouldn't be taken lightly. It ranks just as high as Thanksgiving and Christmas, because it was a time to celebrate the fact that Jesus spared us, all of us. So I'd like to pray for you. Bow your heads. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you, Lord, that you chose to sacrifice your firstborn so that we would always have the Lamb of God who takes the sins of the world away. Thank you, Jesus, for the forgiveness and the eternal life that you've given to us. Lord, we express our gratitude to you, and we honor you for your great love. We look forward to the last picture that you promised when all the redeemed, sorry, when all the redeemed saints are together with you in the new heaven and the new earth. We will be with our families who are already there. Thank you, Lord. Like Rod, 
Grandma Sue, and all of our family members at that glorious banquet, the party of all parties, honoring you, Jesus, where we will celebrate, where you will celebrate with us. Now I know that I know that I know it will be picture perfect because I can see it. And if you can see it, say amen. 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 Mahalo ke Allah. Many of you know that uh, in the virtual audience, since the time that we uh, started Zooming, so that's over two years ago, uh, Charlie and Sue uh, out in Germany, they, they tune in regularly. They, I don't know if they've ever missed a service, even though they live in Germany, which I would remind you is 12 hours ahead of us. So now 9.15 in the morning is 9.15 p.m. there. They wait for the service to start. And, and so recently, the church where they attend there in Germany, um, the ladies that provided the worship music. There were two guitar ladies playing guitar. Um, they are not at the church anymore. So the, the church has been singing to uh, CDs and YouTube videos and those kinds of things, which is something that I can really identify with because when we first started, it's 26 years ago, and we didn't have CDs. We had cassettes. So we were singing to cassettes, believe it or not. In fact, I think I listened to lots of Randy Lorenzo music on cassette tapes. So, um, so I can really identify with that. So Charlie said, yeah, a track. <laughs> so Charlie said recently, he might try to bring out his piano and he might try to provide some music uh, accompaniment for the worship service on Sunday. And he said, please pray for me in doing that because one, it's new for him. Secondly, uh, culturally, it may be uh, moving the German congregation into a place where they're not very familiar, maybe not as demonstrative as uh, he would like it to be demonstrative, but they're not that demonstrative right now. And so he said, send me two songs. And one of the songs he wanted was this song that that I'm going to share with you now, which is a great song. But, you know, I mean, Charlie really going for the gusto because he chose this song. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. It's the year of Jubilee, out of Zion's hill, The dry bones becoming a flesh. And these are the days, the days of your servant David, rebuilding a temple of praise. Oh, these, these, these are, are the days, days, days of the harvest. The fields are wide in the world. Oh, these are the days. Paper, paper. Preparing the way of the Lord. Behold, 
few minutes to greet one another with the love of the Lord. Don't forget to see the folks outside on the lanai. They want to say, how's it to you? And don't forget to see the people in the virtual audience, especially Charlie and Sue from Germany. I'll switch them now. I switch them. Yeah, I was turning and was moving. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Good morning. I see way more smiling faces than that. So we'll try that again. I'm not using them yet. Okay. Okay. All right. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Good morning. Love you so much. We've got some announcements this morning. Um, as you know, it's the first Sunday of the month. We partake in communion. And we also like to pray over all of the keiki. So I see some walking around. If you can walk up to the front of this, the stage and Auntie Stacy would be honored to pray for you this morning. Um, so all the keiki 18 and under, please come up and be blessed. Is that everyone? All righty. Now, if we can just raise our head, uh, our hands to these beautiful kids, come in agreement with prayer. <sighs> Heavenly Father, you are such a good God. You are such a good Father. We thank you for the precious gift of our children. Your word says that every good gift comes from you. So right now, we want to take the time to thank you for your goodness. Thank you for trusting us to care for each and every one of these kids that stand before you today. And we want to lift up the ones that weren't able to make it, Lord. We pray for your blessings and your covering over them. Help us as leaders and as parents of the church over our kids, Lord. Help us to rely on you and your word for wisdom and direction. Parenting isn't always easy. And sometimes I feel unworthy of being a mom. But you are so good. And you always give us a way out. And you always show us grace, which is what I pray for the kids that stand here today, Lord, that the parents are able to show them the same grace that you have given to us. Help us to be the great leaders that we are called to be. Give us the joy and the peace in knowing that you are in control. Give us the tools that we need to teach them in the way that they should go so that when they grow, they will not depart from it. 
but instead that they will go out into the world and shine in even brighter light than we have shined. They will speak the name of Jesus. They will praise and they will worship you and not just in a sanctuary, Lord, but in their schools, in their community, everywhere they go, people will see something in them and they will want that. And that is what I pray for our children. That other, that their peers look at them and that they desire what they have, which is you, Lord. Your DNA flowing through them. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your uh, faithfulness. We thank you for your promises that we can call upon each and every day. We thank you for your compassion and your friendship. We love, we love you, Lord. And may all glory go to you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ladies, Saturday, July 30th, 8 a.m. over Zoom, we will be going over the book of Proverbs. Again, Proverbs will be a little bit different from our previous studies, uh, previous to Psalms. It's a little bit different. Um, I already finished my book, so I think we are going over what is our favorite Psalms for certain um, certain things. I believe one is the tongue, one is health, one is wealth. Uh, I forget. There's there's a few, but um, make sure to read your emails. If there's anyone in here or on Zoom that's not signed up with us that want to join, please um, let me know. All I need is your email, and I can give you all the information. Love you. Thank you. Proverbs, full of wisdom, was, was the very first book I started reading, actually, was Proverbs. And uh, King Solomon was my favorite character in the Bible when I first started. And then we talked about how many wives he had, and I was like, oh, this guy can't be my favorite anymore. <laughs> Love Proverbs. Uh, so a few more announcements. We have one for the church, and that is this Thursday and Friday. Uh, July 7th and 8th, uh, we have the Texas choir group coming to paint. And I think we had this scheduled before and we have it rescheduled for this Thursday and this Friday. And we are looking for volunteers to help with painting and serving lunch. If you have the time, it'll be from uh, July 7th, 1030 to 230, which is Thursday. And then July 8th, which is Friday, 1130 to 330. So if you're interested in helping, supervising, painting, serving, whatever you can do, just let us know. And then, uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so we will be here Thursday, 1030, Friday, 1130. Okay, so that's the first announcement. Next announcement is that every Monday we have prayer warriors that are praying for each and every one of you. And if you have a special need or prayer request, please make it known. You can, you can let somebody know. You can write it down on a little piece of paper. Uh, we have the offering bowl in the back where Grandma Sue's seat is, and you can drop it into the offering bowl. It can be completely anonymous if you want, but they will be here praying. So if you are in need of prayer, please write it down and make it known. Uh, Wednesday night, we have... Uh, Bible study at 5 p.m. in person. We are making our way through the book of Isaiah. And for those of you who are here that have been attending, we will have no uh, video study this week. It, we will just be reading uh, chapters 15, 16, and 17 of the book of Isaiah uh, this week. So if you want to join us, we'll be here at 5 o'clock. Um, I was thinking about not mentioning that, that we do have cookies and brownies sometimes. <laughs> And chocolate cake. So I was debating whether or not I should make that known because I've been getting less and less brownies every week because people have been coming and, and having brownies. Um, but if you want to join us, that'll be at 5 o'clock Wednesday. Thursday, we have hula at 5 p.m. in person. And Friday, celebrate recovery 6 o'clock in person yeah. and on Zoom. <laughs> um, Saturday, July 16th, we have our men's ministry meeting at 9 a.m. We have food there as well. So if you want to join us, um, July 16th on Saturday, 9 a.m., the men will be meeting in person and on Zoom. Um, 
Okay, a couple more announcements is, I've mentioned this a couple times and we're getting closer. July 23rd, we have Freedom Fest Ho'olaulea down at Nani Mau Gardens um, at the Overcoming Fate Center where we will be able to meet some of the candidates that'll be running this year. And so it's, it starts at 9 a.m. and it ends at 2 p.m. If you're interested, I will leave this exact uh, card in the back on the table. You can snap a picture of it. And if you'd like to attend, uh, please do so. Um, the next announcement is that tomorrow in Volcano Village, there will be the 4th of July parade. And it starts at 9 a.m., the Volcano Village parade. If you'd like to attend, uh, it'll be at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, and then the final announcement is our website, newhopevolcano.com. You can go and check it out and see what's happening with the church at, at newhopevolcano.com. There's blogs up there. If you haven't signed up, there's a place that you can put your email in. And anytime a blog gets posted, you will get notified immediately. And you can go and read uh, some of the blogs there. There's pictures there. Uh, the notes are normally posted there. And the video message after service today gets posted on our YouTube channel and on the website. So either way, if you're looking for uh, the message from today or, or any of the past Sundays that we've had them, you can go to the website or to the YouTube channel. So if you have YouTube on your phone, you just uh, tap on the app, type in New Hope Volcano, and you have access to all of our archive of services that we've had. Um, so that being said, um, we come to the part where the tithes and offerings, and we have a couple ways to do that this morning. If you want to give a tithe, your tithe or your offering this morning, you can do it online by going to newhopevolcano.com, clicking on the link, and then you can enter your information. It's very safe, very convenient, and you can give that way. If you're in the building and you'd like to give this morning, we have an offering bowl in the back. Uh, you can feel free to drop your tithe or your offering into the offering bowl. Now, of course, we say all of that to say, if you're visiting us for the first time, please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. So if we could bow our heads this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we want to give you thanks and praises this morning, Father. We thank you for another day of life that we get to wake up, we get to be in your presence, we get to come to church, we get to worship you and praise you. And Father, we know that this is the building and that we are the church, Father. And we thank you for the fellowship that we share with one another. We thank you that Jesus, your son, is the glue that binds us all together, Father. We thank you for your provisions and caring for all of our needs and knowing what we need before we even ask. Father, we can rest assured that we can find what we need in our lives in you. And Father, this morning we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. We pray that you use it according to your will. Father, we're so grateful for this church and this church body. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And we pray this morning in Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And all kinds of things about this country the good and the bad and we were uh, extremely patriotic especially when the olympics came around everything was usa no matter what event it was we were cheering for the united states and you know i still have to agree this country is still the greatest country in the world no offense to any other country 
But the, one of the things that make us great is our freedoms, the freedoms that we have. And I know some things have changed over the years and it seems like some of those freedoms are in jeopardy, but the fact remains the same that we still are free, free to choose, free to live and free to worship. And in this very moment, we are practicing our freedom of religion or our freedom to worship this very moment. The fact that we can come together and worship God in the name of Jesus is a right that many believers around the world do not have. They have to worship in private with fear of persecution or worse, death. So we began celebrating our independence from Great Britain on July 4th, 1776, where we established ourselves as a free country based upon godly principles. Our second president, John Adams, who signed the Declaration of Independence, wrote a letter home to his wife, and this is what he said. And I, and I read this last year, and I, I'm going to read it every year because I think it's amazing. Um, president Adams says, July 1776 will be the most memorable epic in the history of America. I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. Isn't that beautiful? It ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade, with shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other from this time forevermore. And I share this with you not to give you a history lesson because I am not the guy to do that, <clears throat> but instead to state the fact that the men who fought to establish this country built this country based upon godly principles. And the difference between the United States and other countries are our freedoms but we know that true freedom is found in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. So I heard a story one time. A friend, a friend of mine told me a story of this small town where all of the residents were ducks. Okay, just bear with me. Follow me with this guy. All of the residents were ducks. So the ducks left waddled out of their house. They waddled down Main Street. They waddled into church. They picked their favorite seat. The duck pastor came out, he opened the duck Bible, and he said to them, ducks, you have been given wings. With wings, you can fly. With wings, you can mount up uh, like eagles. No walls can confine you. No fences can hold you. You have wings. God has given you wings, and you can fly like birds. And all the ducks jumped up and they shouted, amen. And then they all waddled home. <laughs> now that's a funny analogy, but we can be the same way sometimes. We learn from God's word. And then when we close the book, we forget about what it says. And we go back to what we know and what we're comfortable with. When the book of John chapter eight, Jesus is speaking to some ducks and he he's speaking to the people in the temple, and he said, and they're asking him, Jesus, who are you? And Jesus responds by saying, I am who I've always claimed to be. And when you lift the Son of Man on the cross, then you will understand that I am he. And he goes on to tell them in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, uh, the, the, the scriptures in your notes, it says, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful in my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They did not know this at the time, but what Jesus said was such a profound statement. They couldn't understand what he meant by this. <clears throat> they said to Jesus, set us free. We aren't slaves to anyone. What are you talking about? And Jesus responds by dropping truth bomb on them where he says everyone who sins is a slave to sin and outside of christ we all had an eternal death sentence we were all on death row we we're living according to our sinful nature 
controlled by the pull and the power of sin. And maybe we didn't understand it at the time, but we were destined for an eternity separated from God. And the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. And we'll cover the second half of that verse a little bit later because it, it is of the utmost importance. The wages of our sin is death, and death is what we deserve because of our sin. But in verse 36 of John chapter 8, Jesus offers them a truthful answer to their question. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. And the scriptures we'll be reading from this morning will mostly come from the New Living Translation. So if Jesus sets us free, then we are truly free, free from the bondage of sin. So this morning in your notes, I've created an acrostic. And this morning's acrostic was inspired by the Holy Spirit and Pastor Ray. Because anytime, anytime we do an acrostic, we got to give a nod to Pastor Ray because Pastor Ray loves acrostics. So let's begin with the first letter. The acrostic, as you can see in your notes, is the word free. And the, the first letter, letter F, is, stands for forgiveness. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2, the word says, He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of the world. It was by the blood that was shed on the cross that brought forgiveness of the sins for all the people of the world. And without the blood of Jesus, there's no forgiveness of sins. And through the forgiveness of our sins, we are then made righteous in God's eyes. In our sin, we're separated from God. For he is holy, he is pure, and he is righteous. But because our sins are forgiven, we are now made righteous before God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. God made him meaning Jesus, who knew no sin, being perfect and pure and holy, to be sin for us, so that in him, meaning Jesus, we may become the righteousness of God. How amazing. We receive forgiveness for our sins by Jesus becoming sin. Jesus was the perfect, pure, and holy sacrifice, the only sacrifice that would be sufficient for God. He took our sins and was sacrificed on the cross so that we could be cleared of our debts. No more sin. And now that that transaction has been made, now that we've been cleared of our debts, now that we have a clean slate, we are now righteous before God. Now we can come directly to the throne of our Heavenly Father through His Son who completed His will. And this is really the essence of Christianity, the basics, so to speak. But how can we consider something basic when it is so amazing and so astounding? The forgiveness of our sins through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, should be at the forefront of our minds every, walking, every waking minute of our life. And forgiveness equals freedom from guilt. Jesus told Peter that he should forgive 77 times. I remember the first time I read that scripture, I wasn't really happy that that's what the Bible said because 77 times felt like too many times to forgive. Joseph forgave his brothers when they sold him into slavery. And Jesus says in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. So, uh, Jesus sets us free by the forgiveness of our sins. The second letter, uh, the letter R, stands for redemption. And redemption is defined as the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. Jesus is our Redeemer. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, the word says, With his own blood, not the blood of goats or calves, he entered the most holy places once for all time and secured our redemption forever. 
With his own blood, he secured our redemption forever. We also read that we are justified through the redemption of Jesus. In the book of Romans chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, the word says, For all have sinned and fall, fall short of the glory of God. Amen. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. As perfect as we all try to be every day, we all fall short. I shared a story with the Wednesday night group. And again, I'm going to say it every time I get up here. If you're not coming Wednesday night, you're missing out. Wednesday night, I shared a story that Stacy Isaiah and I went to Genki Sushi. And when we went to Genki Sushi, uh, we went and we stood in line and there were like three or four people in front of us. And, we wait, and we're waiting very nicely. And, and for those of you who know me pretty well, you know that I do not do well in lines. I'm not a fan of lines. I don't like to go to the post office. I don't like traffic. I don't like grocery store lines. I don't do well with lines. The Lord hasn't delivered me from that quite yet. But there were three or four people in front of us and we're waiting. And then a gentleman gets out of his car walks up to the door and scans a code on the window with his phone. And then he jumps back in his car and I'm standing there. I'm looking around like, Oh, that was weird. And Stacy reads the sign and it says, Oh, scan this code. If you want to reserve a table. And I thought to myself, no, I'm, I'm physically waiting in line. I, why, you know, why would I need to scan a code? So five minutes go by, we get into the building, we get to speak to the lady inside. And she says, have you scanned the code? And I said, I absolutely have not scanned the code. I'm waiting in line for my turn. And she said, you need to scan the code. And so one or two other tables have cut in front of us because they scanned the code and I'm waiting in line. And I get so frustrated. I tell Stacy, let's get out of here. I, I don't even want to eat anymore. Let's get out of here. And she turns to me and she says, be patient. This is a good time to practice patience. But <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe that I waited in line like I was supposed to, and someone else got a table in front of me. And I was so upset, but it didn't take me long to realize that I had fallen short again, because I know that I have issues, I have problems with waiting in line. And that's why the scriptures are so important in our daily lives or in our Christian walks, is to know that, yes, we do fall short, but we are redeemed through the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. We are redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Where we would once fall and wallow in our shortcomings, we can now dust the, get up and dust ourselves off and get back on track, on the path of righteousness. Uh, the third letter we look into this morning in, the, in our acrostic of the word free is the letter E, and that stands for edification. Edification, uh, the description is a building up in a moral or religious sense, instruction, improvement, and progress of the mind in knowledge, in morals, or in faith, and in holiness. Now, I got that definition from the King James Bible definition. Uh, I never knew that it existed, but it does. And so it gives a very biblical definition of the word edification. But in short, to edify means to build up. And edification is spoken about many times and very clearly in the Bible. The Bible teaches us that we should edify or build up the body of Christ or the church. And as we know, we individually make up the body of Christ. So we are called to build up one another. We live in a world where tearing people down, uh, is seen all around from reality TV to talk shows to social media to the opinion section in the Hawaii Tribune Herald. It's full of people arguing and putting each other down. And this type of behavior causes, causes hostility and division. And this type of behavior is not new to our time. In the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul warns the church of Ephesus not to fall into this trap. Chapter 4, he's telling them that we should come in unity in our faith and knowledge of Jesus so we will no longer be immature like children. He says, so that we won't be tossed and blown about 
by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with their lies so clever that they sound like truth. In verse 15 and 16 of chapter 4, Paul says this. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is edified and full of love. The church is built on the foundation of Christ's love and continues to grow as we build up or edify each other with our words and actions. And as followers of Christ, we are mandated by the Spirit of God to enlighten or improve the whole body of Jesus. There may be some things we don't agree upon as the body of Christ. For instance, some of you who are sitting here who are lovers of Christ say that you love to eat poke. And I would say, why don't we throw it in a pan for a couple minutes and cook it a little bit? I, a lover of Christ, personally happen to love fruitcake during the holidays. And some of you would say, I'm out of my mind. Some of us are Democrats. Some of us are Republicans. Some of us graduated from Hilo High. Some of us graduated from Waikia High. Or worse yet, some of us are Philadelphia Phillies fans. And some of us are Atlanta Braves fans. And although some of us have personal uh, likes and dislikes and they don't align or line up, it's the love of the Lord that binds us together. And because we all play a part in the body of Christ, we are bonded together by Jesus' love, and we have a responsibility now to edify or build one another up. <clears throat> Just to give everyone an idea, I wanted to see what the Bible said about how we can edify one another. So I've listed three ways in the notes uh, that teaches us how we can edify each other. Number one, we can edify each other with our gifts. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, the word says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, we spoke about spiritual gifts a little bit. There are many gifts that are listed in the Bible. But those gifts have been poured out on the church for the edification of the body. So as we come into the knowledge, the application, and demonstration of our own spiritual gifts, we have the responsibility to help grow the church. Our gifts aren't meant for our own personal uh, edification. Rather, they are meant to we are meant to use those gifts for others. The second way we can uh, edify the body is we can edify with our fellowship. Um, the Greek word for fellowship is, oh man, this is the Greek word for a fellowship, okay guys? Koinonia, koinonia. It means Christian fellowship or intimate communion. And we can edify each other with fellowship, uh, with our fellowship by praying together, by sharing testimonies, by sharing struggles, by sharing victories, by checking on one another, helping each other, and using our gifts that we've been blessed with to help one another. Romans chapter 15, verse 2. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. Now, this is something I got to be honest with you guys that the Lord has put on my heart very strongly over the last three years or so since the pandemic, because it's something that I took for granted prior to that. I would come to church and I would see my church family and I love my church family and we'd share a meal and then I would go home and then I'll see you guys next Sunday. And since the pandemic, it has really changed things because we weren't able to meet with one another. And so we started meeting online. And I know that that doesn't sound as, like, as much fun, but at the time it was amazing because we could still fellowship online. Even though we weren't in the same room, we could share, still speak to each other and pray for each other. And it was an amazing blessing. But since that time, the Lord has put it on my heart how important it is to be in fellowship 
with our other brothers and sisters in Christ, because it is an edification process. It does encourage, uh, it encourages me, and I, and I pray that I can encourage you in some way. <clears throat> and I can't tell you how many times I've been in small group, uh, and brothers and sisters walk in with a problem. Literally, they walk in and they have something going on in their life, and they walk out with appointments and, and things scheduled and arranged for other brothers and sisters to come to their house and help them with whatever problems they have. So they come to church with an issue. And during the time of fellowship and sharing, a solution is, is given by the Lord by other brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, like I said earlier, Lori and Jeannie bring cookies and brownies on Wednesday and I help them get rid of it. And I know that's not a task for the faint of heart, but God has blessed me with a palate to know good confections when I see them. <clears throat> and Stacy has said it many times, as have I, that you can go into a small group, tired, moody, irritated, sad, stressed, and you leave feeling so uplifted. Fellowship with other believers is a blessing that is used for the edification of the body of Christ. And the, um, the next E, uh, the, oh, I'm sorry, the third way we can edify is we can edify with our love. First Corinthians chapter eight, verse one, the word says, now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. Nothing builds up a church more than the demonstrated love of Christ. As we love one another, we are encouraged to continue the faith in times of joy and difficulty. And our spirits are rejuvenated by the Holy Spirit when we sense and appreciate the love of God demonstrated through his people. <clears throat> okay, so that takes us to the, um, the final E. Uh, and that is in this acrostic, uh, eternal life. The final E is eternal life. John 3, 16 and 17, everybody's favorite. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus frees us from our sins the very sins that sentence us to death. From an eternity separated from God to eternal life in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Everlasting life found only in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And through this free gift of salvation, Jesus set us free from the fear of death. We look forward to the day that we can go home to be with our Father. And it's an amazing thing to think about because even before anyone gets saved, you think about death. And when you think about death before Christ, you don't know what's going to happen to you. And so you live for this world to accomplish as much as you can in this world. But when you have salvation through the sacrifice of Jesus, you know exactly where you're going. And it's a better place. And you look forward to it. And the Apostle Paul says, uh, in his famous verse, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And so we're free from the fear of death because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. I, you know, I, 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 I keep on saying, I think I shared this story. I think I shared this story because we have so much small groups <laughs> and I, I'm sharing stories all the time. But Stacy is the best example of this for me that I see in my life because of all the health, health issues that she has in her life. It, it is actually life-threatening, the health issues that she has. She has upcoming surgeries that are scheduled. She has, for the rest of her life, she has to maintain some of the health issues that she has. And to see Stacy at 30 young years old have the same attitude as the Apostle Christ. She doesn't fear death because she knows where she's going. It's such an amazing thing to see. So as we, in closing, as we celebrate tomorrow the independence of our great country and the freedoms that we experience because our forefathers built this country on Christian principles, 
we are very fortunate, maybe to the point of taking it for granted. The fact that we live in the United States with, of America and the freedom that comes with that. Sometimes we may take it for granted. But the truth is, it doesn't matter who you are, where are you from, or what country you live in. Freedom is ultimately found in Christ Jesus. And if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Amen. If we can bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the free gift of grace, Father. We thank you for the salvation we can find in your son, Christ Jesus. And we thank you for all of the blessings that come with that, Father. Because if it was just salvation alone, if we could inherit the kingdom of heaven by believing in Christ Jesus, that would be more than enough. That would be more than enough. But the fact is that you free us from the bondage of our sins you give us a way out. You free us from the fear of death. We find, we find freedom in Christ Jesus. Having a relationship with Christ Jesus is more than just spending eternity in heaven with you. And again, if that's all that there was, that would be more than enough. And Father, we gather together as one body. And we thank you for this time that you set apart, that we can come we can sing songs, we can praise you, that we can come and we can fellowship, we can talk, we can laugh, we can cry, we can pray. And that is all for the purpose of edification of the body of Christ. And we thank you for your presence during that time, Father, that when we come, sometimes we are tired. Sometimes we're not in the mood. Sometimes we're grouchy. I can remember there's times I'm driving to church and I'm getting in an argument with my wife. But when I leave church, I feel lifted, so encouraged, so blessed. And I thank you for that. Father, I thank you for all the hearts that are here seeking you. And congregation, we want to take this time now as an opportunity to offer those who do not have a relationship with Christ Jesus to begin one now. And I cannot stress the importance of that. Because like we said, before Christ, we are sentenced to death. And so this morning, if you have not received Christ... Uh, we just want to offer you an opportunity to receive life. And if you're not sure how to do that, we're going to say a prayer this morning. And so you can say this prayer. And if you have an open heart and you are ready to receive Jesus this morning, by saying this prayer, you are asking him into your life to be the leader of your life. And you can begin to have a relationship with him and you be can begin to walk in salvation. Uh, I want those to say the prayer as well, who have been walking with but maybe you haven't been as bold as you used to be or as bold as you want to be. Maybe you have accepted Christ and you have taken that relationship for granted and you have started to do things on your own again like you used to before. I want to offer you an opportunity right now to reestablish that relationship, to allow Jesus to be the leader and Lord of your life. So you too, if you are ready and your heart is ready, to, to, to recommit to Jesus. I want you to say that prayer this morning. And then for those who have accepted Jesus and are walking boldly, I ask that you please say this prayer with us as an encouragement, as an edification for the body of Christ. So this morning, if you can repeat after me, Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have not always um, asked for your help or your advice. I want to change that now. This morning, I recognize you as my forgiver. And I want to follow you as my leader. Come into my life as best as I know how, for as long as I know how, I will follow you. So now I say, so that you can hear me, so that I can hear me, so that my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me first. Father, I thank you for those who have said the, that prayer for the first time. I pray that your presence be among them. I pray that you draw them near, Father. And I pray that we can welcome them into the kingdom of heaven. And Father, for those who have said that prayer, 
um, not for the first time, but to reestablish that connection with you, that they know what they were, what they're missing when they're not walking closely beside you. And I pray that you draw them near as well, Father. Father, we thank you so much for the freedom of religion, Father, that we can come and gather in your name. I thank you for uh, the brothers and sisters that are here. I thank you for the worship that will be lifted up. And I pray for travel mercies. I pray for uh, your blessing during the time of fellowship after service. We love you so much, Lord. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give Pastor Jason a round of applause. So, Thank you, Pastor Jason. Pastor Jason, is Pastor Jason still there? I took your picture down to Genki Sushi. I said, if you ever see this guy again, don't you ever make him wait in line. And if you do, he's practicing patience, so no problem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this marks the official close of the, the morning service. We want to thank you for coming, all of you who came um, to the in-person service and all of you who tuned in online. We're going to uh, sing one more song. If you feel like singing, please be uh, invited to sing. We're going to sing, I Walk by Faith. And uh, I walk by faith, not by sight. We're going to sing. And uh, if you want to sing, please sing with us. If you are... Um, wanting to visit one with the other then go ahead you don't have to wait till we finish because the service is officially over um if you are headed out uh, whether it's when we're singing or whatever please have a great rest of the day enjoy the fourth of july be safe and you know when J pastor jason said the fourth of july uh, writings by the president said all kinds of things including guns if you're using guns please shoot in the air and don't shoot in the bushes and hit something okay whatever you choose to do god bless you and have a great fourth of july weekend Trust in you. I walk, I walk by faith, by faith each, step, each step, by faith, by faith to, live, to live by faith. faith I put my trust, trust in you. Every step I take is a step of faith. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every prayer I make is a prayer of faith. If my God is for me, show me who can be against me. I walk, I walk by faith, faith each step, by faith, to live by faith. I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you. God bless you, everybody. Have a great day.